Welcome back everybody to another Path on the Wrath of the Righteous Guide. Today we're gonna go through multiclassing and why I think that you should always multiclass. At least if you're playing a melee character. And if you're playing an unfair, at least. <laughs> Keep in mind though that everything I say in this video is going to be true on the lower difficulties, but on the lower difficulties, feel free to play around a little bit more roleplay, goof around, pick up what you think is fun and what you like, essentially. But today we're gonna talk about min-maxing your character. How do you min-max your character? Well, let's jump straight into it. So, to get a comparison, we have to look at what you get if you don't multicast. We just go pure fighter. What do you get? Well, you get a lot of combat feats, which I would say is the big advantage with going fighting. You get a lot of combat feats. It's hard to utilize all of them in a good way, I would say, personally, but you might disagree. Anyways, you also get weapon training, but you get it kind of deeper, because you're level 5 first. You get a big advantage in getting weapon training, and then it increases. Of course, weapon training gives a plus bonus on attack and damage rolls, and of course, it increases, increases, increases. On level 20, if you multiclass, you will not get this. You get Weapon Mastery. Any attacks made with a weapon uh, that you are focused in automatically confirm all critical threats and have the damage multiply increased by 1. In addition, it cannot be disarmed while wielding weapons of this type. Weapon Mastery, of course, there are other ways of increasing your damage multiplier by 1. Of course, there is a Mythic Feat, which does pretty much the same thing. And the only thing that you get from this then would be that you automatically confirm all critical threats. But of course, you could just get around that. In most cases, everything is going to be evil in this game, and there's going to be a spell called Holy Weapon, or if it's a line weapon or something like that, which makes it so that every hit or every crit against a evil enemy is going to automatically confirm. So you can quite easily get this in other means, but that is what you get for being a fighter. So, you get a couple of things, I would say, for being a fighter, but can we do better? Yeah, of course we can. <laughs> Let's have a look at how we can do this better. First of all, I'm gonna mention one thing, a minor thing one could say, but it's also, uh, I think it's worth considering. So, when you just select one class, you can see what you get on level 1. You get base attack bonus of 1, and uh, then it increases to plus 2. Your fortitude save, for just picking up one level of fighter, you get a plus 2 on your fortitude save. For going to level 2 on fighter, that increases by 1, and the uh, base attack bonus increases by 1. But let's say, for instance, we go fighter paladin. What do we get for that? Well, if we go into paladin, on our first level of paladin, let's just select something, divine hunter, divine guardian, whatever. <laughs> any, any class will do. Let's say we go 1 level fighter, 1 level paladin. Well, then we also add the paladin fortitude bonus of plus 2, and the will save of plus 2. So in total, we're gonna have a higher fortitude save than a plus 4 on our fortitude, higher than the, the fighter, and we're gonna have a higher will save of plus 2. That is kind of nice, the base attack bonus is going to be the same, so it's not gonna to affect really anything, it's just gonna be better, essentially. Yes, we haven't progressed towards our weapon training, but we picked up Paladin and we got a couple of nice bonuses such as Smite Evil. I'm gonna go through most classes, but I'm gonna go through them from top to bottom, because that's gonna be a little bit confusing for me <laughs> where we are and which ones we've done already. And I know we will have to mention the Vivisectionist first. I know I mention this in almost every video I make, how much I love the Vivisectionist, but let's just get it out of the way. Let's just get it out of the way so that we can continue and do the other classes. And why you should subclass with them, maybe? and what the benefits are and what you can add to your character with multiclassing. So, let's say you go one level of a sectionist also to your fighter. What do you get? Well, first of all, you get sneak attack. Sneak attack is kind of easy to enable. Of course, if you don't know what it does, it deals an extra d6 damage. If you have multiple sneak attack uh, levels, for instance, if you go one level of rogue, one level of a sectionist, you will have two dice. That means you are going to deal two d6 and then you can increase to three d6 and so on and so forth. Uh, this bonus you will only get when the any time her target will be denied a dexterity bonus or when the character flanks the target. Flanking is probably the easiest way of always enabling sneak attack. Just have another character fight there or an animal companion or easiest way, just gonna go ahead and say, it's just being on top of your animal companion because then you know you will always be sneak attacking. Easiest way to make that happen. So of course if you go a every sectionist fighter you're gonna lose out on your base attack bonus. It's a little bit bad, we'll admit that's gonna make it a little bit slower to get that extra attack. A little bit slower, but you also get Mutagen. Mutagen, you can add a plus for all chemical bonus to a ability score, which is 99% of cases going to be strength. You add plus 4 to that, which means you're gonna have plus 2 damage with your character, compared to if you were a fighter. And you're gonna be up plus one on your attack bonus. Sure, you don't get a base attack bonus, which is bad again, because you don't get extra attacks 
uh, that quick. You, you won't get them on turn on uh, your level 2, uh, but it will be a little bit slower progression towards uh, getting your next attack. But you will be actually be up one attack uh, bonus on your attack because of the strength that you get, because of the extra strength. So extra damage, extra attack roll. Okay, so we're gonna hit easier, we're gonna deal more damage, a lot more damage, we're gonna deal one or two more extra damage from the muted in strength, and one d6 from a sneak attack. So quite a substantial increase in damage, just from one level of vivisectionist. Of course, if you add more level of vivisectionists, you can get a lot of benefits. One level of vivisectionist also allows you to cast spells, and they are not really spells, they are actually potions. You can pick up things such as True Strike, which is very, very needed, I would say. If you're playing on the highest difficulty, you need to use True Strike. True Strike, of course, adds a plus 20 insight bonus on your attack rolls, guaranteeing that you can actually hit something, which is very, very good. And the lower difficulty is not as needed, but against certain bosses and certain encounters, that can actually be really good even on normal difficulty. So, if you level up more vivisectionist, what do you get for that? Well, let's have a look. You are gonna get more sneak attack die. You're gonna get a medical discovery, which you can just exchange for a combat trick. So, it's essentially the same thing as you would have gotten from the fighter. And you can also, uh, I would say, you can also get more attack bonus here. So, on level 1, sure, you don't get a base attack bonus, but on level 2 you get it, on level 3 you get it, on level 4 you get it, and on level 4 you also get level 2 spells, so, which means you can cast invisibility. And since the alchemist uses potions instead of spells, they don't have any arcane spell failures. So even if you're wearing a heavy armor, you can still just drink your potion, go invisible, and that means that your opponents are going to be flat-footed, and you're going to hit them much, much easier. Much, much easier. You can also increase this with the mythic feats called Abundant Casting. Which means you can maybe have 6 uses or something like that. Let's say you have a 14 or 16 intelligence or something like that. Then you're gonna have uh, 6 uses of your invisibility just from going 4 level to the sectionist. And you're gonna have 2 extra sneak attack die. And you're gonna have combat feat, combat feat. So you're going to be about the same power level. Uh, about the same attack bonus, or you're gonna have a higher attack bonus than the fighter, and you're gonna have way more damage than the fighter, and you're gonna be able to go invisible, and you're gonna have true strike. Okay, that's the case for the uh, vivisectionist, why you should maybe go vivisectionist. Barbarian, why would you go barbarian? Well, barbarian of course gets rage, and they get rage powers. Let's select uh, someone who actually gets... Okay, you don't get rage level 1. Yeah, let's just go to bog standard barbarian. Or the armored hulk is fine also. So, if you go, for instance, Fighter Barbarian, the Barbarian gets Rage, and they can Rage for a number of rounds per day equal to 4 plus her Constitution modifier. And this, of course, well, while in Rage, a Barbarian gets a plus 2 bonus on melee attack rolls and melee damage rolls. So let's say, for instance, you go Fighter, 1 level, then you go uh, Vivisectionist, 1 level, then you go Barbarian, 1 level, which means that if you have Rage, and you have dr drunk in your Mutagen, then you will actually be up Let's see, a plus 3 on your attack rolls, and you will deal 3 extra damage, plus 1d6 for the sneak attack. So you will, quite fast, you will uh, outperform the fighter, if you multiclass. That's what you can get from the Barbarian, of course you can also get the Rage powers, but the stronger Rage powers are unfortunately locked a little bit, uh, you need to go a little bit deeper into Barbarian to actually be able to pick those up. Other things is Blood Rage, Blood Rage is very similar to the Barbarian, you get rage powers, but you also get a bloodline power. Uh, a bloodline. So bloodlines are very, very strong. They add a strong benefit to your character. And right now, I would definitely recommend that you go for the black dragon. Because the black dragon is now bugged. And it gives you a couple of benefits that you should have actually gotten. You get it on level 1, what you should have gotten on level 20 if you were an angel bloodline. You get immunity to cold, you get immunity to acid, you get resistance, fire... 10, resistance cold, 10, I'm pretty sure, and then you get immunity to like petrification or something like that. So a very, very big upside for just one level of uh, Blood Raider. You also get fast movement, which is very, very good. On the higher difficulties, movement is one of the best defensive tools you have. You just run out of combat. Very, very good. Another good thing I forgot to mention with Alchemist, and I have to mention it, is that there is actually a combat trick that I highly recommend that you go. Uh, or not a combat trick, a med medical discovery, uh, which is called... 
slow reactions. This is something I definitely recommend if you're playing on the higher difficulties. Opponents damage by a character's sneak attack can't make attacks opportunity for one round. It's a very good way of uh, denying your opponents a lot of damage, because a lot of damage often comes from sneak attacks. Maybe they push you, or maybe they kill the animal companion that you're uh, riding or something like that, and they get a sneak attack, and this can often kill a character. So removing your opponent's ability to sneak attack, or not sneak attack, to make an attack opportunity is very good. Okay, now, now it's over with the sectionist. I have to stop mentioning it. So Blood Raider, that's why you maybe should go with the Blood Raider. Cavalier, can you get something from Cavalier? Oh yes, you can get something from Cavalier. If you go Cavalier, my fav personal favorite of course is going to be the Gendarm. Gendarm, of course, you get an animal companion, which is great. I love having an animal companion. You get bonus feats, not as quickly as the um, as the fighter, admittedly, but you get a lot of bonus combat feats. And then you also get to select an order, and we can't see it here, but if you go order of the sword on level eight, whenever you charge something, you will be able to add your uh, mounts strength modifier to your damage roll which can be a lot <laughs> honestly if you go for instance mythic uh let's see a mythic companion is a mythic feat which adds let's see half your mythic rank plus one to all the physical stats of your animal companion and then of course you can add belts and stuff that add strength to you so you can maybe get a plus 10 plus 12 plus 14 maybe modifier on your strength which means that your charges are going to be absolutely insanely mega strong. So that is a reason for going Cavalier, but you need to go very deep in the Cavalier. You need to go level 8, and you need to go Order of the Sword to be able to pick that up. But that's one reason maybe to pick up Cavalier. Other things you can do. Uh, actually, multiclassing with Fighter is not the worst if you don't want to go Alchemist. For some reason, I don't know exactly why. There is the alternative to actually go Mutation Warrior, which actually has the mutagen also into fighter but you need to go three levels into fighter other things that are worthwhile picking up is of course the monk monk there are many reasons for going monk one of the way or one of the reasons you should go monk let's pick up normal monk uh let's pick quartermaster sure uh they get flurry of blows which means they get an extra attack as long as they're using monk weapons as long as they're not using armor so if you're making an unarmored character for some reason then Flurry of Blows can add a lot of damage. Uh, keep in mind, Quarterstaff is, uh, even if you don't go Quarterstaff Master, Quarterstaff will always work with uh, Flurry of Blows because it's a monk weapon. So you get Flurry of Blows. You also get an AC bonus where you add your Wisdom, or if you're going with, let's see, your Scaled Fist, you can add your uh, Charisma bonus, I'm pretty sure, to your, uh, to your AC. Let's see, yes, you can have your Charisma bonus. So if you're going with a Paladin, for instance, which might want a lot of Charisma, so you maybe have 20 Charisma, you can get plus 5 to your AC bonus from Scaled Fist, and then later on you can get some nice bonus from Paladin, which you're also gonna have a look at. So let's just jump to Paladin. Why should you maybe multiclass Paladin? Well, there's a lot of reasons, actually, to multiclass Paladin. First of all, the Paladin gets Smite Evil, which is a very, very good way of removing damage reduction. If you don't know what Smite Evil does, if the target is evil, the Paladin adds her Charisma bonus to her attack rolls and her Paladin levels to all damage rolls made against the target over Smite. You start off with one Smite Evil, but of course there's an item in the game called Conjuration of Summoning, something like that. There's going to be a link down in the description of a guide on how to find that item. That item can add another Smite Evil uh, permanently, so even if you're at one level of Paladin, you can still have two Smites. Which is kind of nice. Uh, the, of course, the biggest upside with picking up Smite Evil is, in my opinion, getting past damage reduction, because a lot of enemies will have a very, very high damage reduction. Sometimes 10, sometimes 20, sometimes 25. It can have very, very high damage reduction, and sometimes it can be very tricky to get past the damage reductions. So having Smite Evil, always being able to get through, at least if they're evil, keep in mind it only works against evil characters, being able to get through the damage reduction is huge, I think. On level 2, they also get Divine Grace, which of course another reason to go a little bit deeper into Paladin, where they add their bonus, uh, or her Charisma bonus on all saving throws. So let's say we picked up a little bit of Monk, and we got into Scale Fist, then we're gonna have plus 5... If we have 20 Charisma, we're going to have plus 5 to our armor from that. And then if we also add in Divine Grace, we're going to have plus 5 on all our saving throws, which means we're going to have really, really high saving throws. If we go into level 3, we actually have a really nice uh, Courageous Defend, no, or of Courage, here it is, where we are immune to fear. Uh, this is going with a no normal Paladin, <laughs> we get this. 
we'll get immune to the fear, which is actually really, really nice. And each ally within 10 feet also gets a plus 4 moment. So maybe going 1 level, maybe going 2, or maybe going 3. I would, could see arguments for all 3 with the Paladin. Keep in mind though that right now Smite even is a little bit bugged. If you have multiple Smites from different characters on the same character. So if you are fighting a boss for instance and you have, let's say, 5 or 6 Paladins and everybody Smites the boss and everybody charges in. Not everybody will, everybody will get the damage reduction. It, it, yeah, they should. They should get the damage reduction. I don't see any rules. I, I'm not a rules expert, but from what I understand, this should work, but it doesn't work. So keep in mind that if you have more than one paladin, Smite Evil is maybe not going to be super effective. Just keep that in mind. Why would you go Ranger? Well, just one level of Ranger will actually allow you to get favored enemy, which can give you a plus two bonus on weapon and weapon attack and damage rolls against a specific type. It's a little bit difficult to make this work. Unfortunately, they've split up Demon into three subclasses. Demons of Slaughter, Demons of Magic, Demon of Power or something like that. And different Demons are part of different subtypes. So it's going to be a little bit tricky to make this work. But if you have a particularly tricky fight, you might level up as a Ranger before you fight them. Or you might even go into Demon Slayer, which has Demons as their... Uh, as their favored enemy. Other things you might consider. Rogue! Very much a something I would consider going in multiclassing. Why? Maybe you would go the Rowdy Rogue, which is my favorite subclass of the Rogue. The Rowdy Rogue has the ability Vital Force. Whenever they use Vital Strike, they add two additional damage per sneak attack die to a damage of her Vital Strike. This is precision damage. Of course, precision or sneak attack dice doesn't work against every enemy, so it's not good maybe to max out completely have every all the damage bound up in sneak attack die because then you're gonna be very sad when you fight enemies which are immune to precision damage but for the enemies which are not immune to precision damage having the ability to go vital force is very very good i could definitely recommend going one level rowdy rogue even though you lose out unfortunately one base attack bonus for the first level of the rowdy rogue shaman would i ever multiclass into a shaman yes I would actually consider going a Shaman Spirit Hunter. This is the subclass that Camila is. If you played a little bit of the game, you might remember that companion. She is a Spirit Hunter, which means she gets Spirit Weapon Enchantment. You don't get the Spirit Animal, instead you get Spirit Weapon Enchantment. It doesn't say it here. You can use this to get the plus, two, oh, plus one enhancement bonus added to your weapon. But also, what it doesn't say here, is that you can also add uh, Ghost Touch to a weapon. So Ghost Touch makes it so that when you're using that weapon and you have this Spirit Weapon en Enchantment activated, so it only works for one minute per day, <laughs> if you take pick up one level of Spirit Hunter, but during that minute, your weapon will have Ghost Touch, which means it will deal full damage to incorporeal creatures. Of course, if the incorporeal creatures also has damage reduction, that is not accounted for. So you're not gonna, you know, bypass the damage reduction, but you're going to bypass their 0 0.5 multiplier for being an incorporeal creature. So if you can also remove their uh, damage reduction, for instance, they might have damage reduction 10 except versus good, for instance, if you cast a line weapon good, and then you have a spirit weapon enchantment, you can deal full damage uh, to all those pesky shadow demons or whatever you're fighting. So that's a good reason for maybe going shaman, but again, keep in mind you're losing your base attack bonus. But if you are really struggling with the corporate creatures, which are, can be really, really difficult actually, this might be a way to go, honestly. Other things you might consider. War Priest! If you really want to have weapons which are good aligned, for instance, you might consider a Champion of the Faith. Because a Champion of the Faith, every... Uh, it doesn't matter which subclass you go in, uh, in War Priest, you can always get... Uh, let's see here. Sacred... You can get a Blessing. I think it's a good blessing, if I remember correctly. Yes. Uh, for You can touch an ally to grant him a holy blessing. For one minute, this ally deals an additional 1d6 point of damage against evil creatures, and during this time, his attacks are treated as good for the purpose of overcoming damage reduction. So this is a good way of getting good aligned weapons, because a lot of enemies have damage reduction except versus good. So that might be one reason to just pick up one level, but if you go deep into War Priest, unfortunately you lose out on the base attack bonus here on level 1, if you go deeper into it, you will also get Sacred Weapon Aligned Weapon. On 4th level, any weapon wielded by a Champion of the Faith counts as having the chosen alignment for the purposes of overcoming damage reduction. You will get this permanently. You will not have to worry about those damage reduction except versus good. So that might be a reason to go War Priest. And is there anyone else? 
Which, there is an argument for maybe going Hagbound to pick up plus 2 strength for Hunched Muscle, but not something I would be overly worried about. I don't see really a reason for going into Wizard. Yeah, that's 20 minutes. That's all the multiclassing I would consider. If you're a melee fighter and if you are playing on Unfair Difficulty, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next guy.